Hey everybody, this is Sean Riley with Riley Real Estate and MassHomesale.com with this week's Q&A Saturday video. Uh, this week we're going to go back to talking a little bit about um, when you need to sell a house as in selling a damaged house, selling a house with issues. Um, and we're going to talk about can I sell a house with unpermitted work. So a lot of times, uh, so obviously people do a lot of things to fix up and upgrade their house. Um, sometimes they do it with permits, sometimes they do it without permits. Um, the permitting process um, can be annoying sometimes. It does cost some money. It's not a lot of money, um, but that is one of the reasons why people don't do it is to save on the money. It's, you know, each permit can cost a couple hundred dollars sometimes. Usually not quite that much, but you know, they can be multiple hundreds of dollars. I would say typically you see most things being, you know, in the 100 to 150 range. But you might have to pull multiple permits. You might have to pull, so if you put on an addition, you might have to pull a general building permit. You might have an electrical permit. You might have a um, plumbing permit. You might have a roofing permit. You know, so that it can add up a little bit. Uh, it also can be a little bit frustrating to go through the inspection process because you have to schedule all of the different inspections. Um, and again, if you have multiple things like that, you might have to have the electrical inspector come out to look at the rough electrical and then the final electrical. Uh, the plumber inspector might have to do the rough plumbing and the final plumbing. Um, you usually have to have a, um, multiple inspections for the you know, your building, your general building permit. So that can be annoying too. And one of the main reasons people skip getting their permits is because. Um, <clears throat> Uh, communities make their money by property taxes, and the property taxes are based on the assessed value of your house. And if you do major improvements on your house, a lot of times your assessed value will go up. So if you put, a, especially if you put something like a major addition onto your house, and say you had a bedroom and a bathroom and several hundred square feet um, and nice new finishes and all that kind of stuff, your assessed value could go up, in which case your taxes could go up. And over the course of many years, especially, um, you could pay, you know, significant, maybe, you know, even in, um, many, many, many thousands of dollars of additional taxes. Uh, so that's one reason why people don't do it. Um, you know, that's obviously depending on how competent <coughs> the town or city is as far as communicating between departments and how often they redo their assessments and all those kind of things like you know that can be a little more hit and miss just because um, yay local government's not all that efficient um, so those are some of the main reasons why people don't get permits in the first place um, so then why is this a problem so there's two main aspects the first one is when you go to sell the property if the people who are going to buy the house find out that there's a lot of work, especially some major things such as additions or, you know, a bathroom addition, like, you know, even within the regular structure, um, you know, an unpermitted new roof, um, a finished basement that didn't have, like, any of that kind of stuff done, um, uh, you replaced a furnace without getting the fire inspection, those sort of things. Um, you know, the buyers could have questions about First, the safety, especially for things like if you didn't get the fire department to inspect your furnace and um, you had a non-electrician do all the wiring, like that kind of stuff. Those are real safety concerns that the buyers might have. And then they also just might worry about the qualities because, um, you know, they might think you were too cheap to spend a couple hundred dollars to get it, you know, permitted by the town. Like, what other places did you maybe cut corners? Um, so... <clears throat> You just might have those obstacles in the first place, like with the buyers, and you know people might not want to put in offers on the house. They might back out of an offer at inspection, or they might ask for large concessions. Um, so all those things are obviously not desirable. Um, and then the possible bigger concern is again for some of these more major major projects, um, especially when you add add um, big high value things to the house like if you put on an addition or you added a bathroom or something like that um, if the bank's appraiser so if your buyer is getting a conventional mortgage through a big bank like how the vast majority of sales go through um, the appraiser might look at the public records and the town records and all that sort of thing to see um, 
you know, they might say there's a difference. So say your house was a 3 one seventeen hundred square foot house and you put on an unpermitted addition, added like 500 square feet, a bedroom and a bathroom. So all of a sudden you, you're selling it as a four bedroom, two bath, uh, what did I say, 17, so like 2200 square foot house. That should be quite a bit more expensive than the um, structure that you originally had. But if the appraiser sees that none of that stuff was permitted, they might not give you any credit for that. So they might value your house on the appraisal like the original 3-1 and just said that, you know, that's nice. You have this extra space and extra stuff, but we don't know that it's illegal and it might not be safe and might have low quality. So we're not going to um, base give you any um, value for that in our appraisal. So they probably won't deny the loan for that, but they might appraise it at a much lower value, which in turn could kill the deal in and of itself. You know, there's no guarantee these things happen, but um, that is not an unlikely circumstance uh, that could come up if you have these kind of things. So the long and the short of it is if you're going to do work on your house, you should probably um, get in touch with your town and find out if you need a permit and if you do, get it. Not everything does need a permit. So, And, you know, some things that you could do that are much more minor, people won't even look, you know, if you didn't get a permit to replace a couple of windows, probably not a big deal. Um, you know, some minor, you know, plumbing, like, you know, technically you shouldn't, only a licensed electrician should change a light fixture. Like, you know, you're not going to get nailed for things like that usually. But for major work, you definitely want to make sure you get everything, all your ducks in a row and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and do that right. If you have work done in the past that didn't have a permit, sometimes you can go back to the um, town office and basically get it done retroly, retroactively. Um, if they, if it's stuff that they can see fairly easily, come out and check the work, um, you know, they probably won't be happy with you and they probably, they might, um, charge you more, charge you a fine and, you know, there's no guarantee that they're even going to pass it. And there might be some things where you might have to open up walls if, for them to really be able to evaluate it. So you could have just a real big problem with some of that stuff. Uh, obviously the easiest way to be able to sell it is to sell it to somebody such as an investor who is looking to, um, do work to the house anyway, so they're going to end up pulling all new permits and doing new work and might have to open up the walls so even work that was done before could get reinspected without bi that big of a deal. They also are probably either going to buy with cash or private financing, so these bank issues won't come up. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as easy if you have a really nice house, um, but if there is uh, other issues with it where it could be a good target for an investor, um, you know, that could be a good way to go. Uh, one thing to keep in mind um, when dealing with investors, there's you know there's tons of different ways to do it stuff. We mostly work on houses that have that need a lot of work, but we certainly like pretty houses as well. And there's different ways to deal with those too. Um, but anyway, so the moral of the story is, if you want to do work, you should probably do it right, get it permitted, and avoid all these problems in the future. Uh, so anyway, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And as always, if you have a question you'd like to see in a future video, you can fill out a form on the website. You can uh, put it on our Facebook page or Twitter account or send an email to masshomesaleinfo at masshomesale.com. Until next week, uh, this is Sean, and uh, have a great week. All right, bye-bye.